Today, I'm gonna to teach you about business email compromise attacks. My name is Javon, and I've been at Huntress for one year as a SOC analyst as part of the Australian team. Business email compromise is a scam targeting businesses or individuals working with suppliers and businesses regularly performing wire transfer payments. Threat actors carry out these sophisticated scams by compromising email accounts and other forms of communication. Attackers rely on social engineering tactics, credential theft, and abuse of victims' trust to conduct your unauthorized transfer of funds. Because BEC mimics normal business communications and doesn't require malware. It's tough to detect and there's usually a delay in noticing missing funds. Let's look at how a business email compromise attack can be carried out. Step one in a business email compromise attack is initial access. BEC scams come in many forms involving email. In some scams, the threat actor impersonates trusted contacts with email address spoofing. In other cases, they can use techniques like password spraying, phishing, or adversary in the middle attacks to directly compromise the email of a trusted contact and then use that compromised email to launch their attacks. Step two is impersonation and email thread hijacking. Once an attacker has gained initial access, they will begin to impersonate a vendor or an employee from within the compromised Microsoft 365 account. The attacker can easily jump into existing conversations about payments like invoice approvals, wire transfers, and vendor negotiations. However, nothing looks off because the attacker's messages are coming from a credible email account. Step three is financial manipulation. The main goal is to trick the victims into transferring money to attacker-controlled accounts by changing payment details on things like wire instructions, bank accounts, or invoices. The victim have no reason to question these changes at this point, so they approve the wire transfer. The money is gone, and no detection alerts were triggered. Step four is persistence and surveillance. The main goal is to have continued access to the target environment and victims' communications. The attacker will set up auto-forwarding rules to monitor email communications between the vendor and the victim's organization. A threat actor can also set up rogue open authorization access to the compromised mailbox to keep a backdoor open for persistence. They might also scope out sensitive information like financial reports, vendor contracts, tax IDs, and sensitive internal documents for extortion scams. The final step is the discovery and fallout stage. Since BEC is difficult to detect, this attack is only discovered when the real vendor or employee who was impersonated by the attacker ask about the missing payment that was routed to the fraudulent account. Typically, after an internal investigation is completed, it will reveal that multiple finance employees receive similar BEC socially engineered emails. Here's a look at potential damages caused by BEC attacks. Financial loss, legal and compliance fallout, especially if client or tax data was involved, and or damage reputation with vendors and partners. To summarize, here are the main stages of a BEC attack. An attacker either spoofs or compromises a trusted business email account and uses it to manipulate financial transactions. The attackers will change payment instructions, hijack email threads, and trick employees into sending money to fraudulent accounts. To stay hidden, attackers create mailbox rules or use rogue open authentication apps to monitor communication. Even if fraudulent transactions are detected later, the financial and reputational damage is already done. 